Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of StarCraft Legacy of the Void. It's going to be a game between Blazeroi and Jeff here on 16-bit, the latter edition. This is a master level game sent to me at falconpaladin at gmail.com with the subject of must cast. I do trust master level games because it features a lot of amazing play, unique play styles, and I like TBT a lot. All right, top right hand corner, we have the Red Terran player from Team UR. It is Blazeois. That actually rolls off the tongue a lot better than I thought it would when I first saw that name. But it's Blazeois. And in the bottom left hand corner, the blue Terran player, Jeff from QT Club. Okie doke. So master level here. Again, these are players that are better than you and I, because you and I are at best diamond. And not as good as the GM players, but trying to get into that GM stage, but not quite stuck in the ways of standard builds, right? Standard builds in the GM level, at the pro level, you don't see a whole lot of craziness at those levels, but master level players do stuff like this. Proxy, double barracks, out of Jeff here in TBT. Now, in fairness, we did cast a couple TBTs as part of the Gauntlet Global Open on Sunday, involving, who were the players there? Who was our Terran that was there and was awesome? Uh, oh my gosh, I can't remember. Somebody remembers, but it was a pro level t uh, Terran player versus GM, and there was a lot of proxy. There was some proxy here, so this might actually be just kind of standard standard setup for the TBT. It looks like Blazewa has the double gas opening. He's going to go for a factory, going to go for some cyclones in his opening. And Jeff is going to go proxy barracks with double gas back home as well. So this could be a two reaper opening into cyclone. Possibly. I'll we'll have to take a look and see what he does with these barracks. But it's going to be, yep, Reaper 1, Reaper 2. Now, I do have a Reaper name that I've been saving for a TVT for what feels like about six months now. So we're going to use it. But uh, this Reaper's name is going to be Superman. Bored of saving people, Superman, the adrenaline junkie, surrenders himself to the Dominion and put, is put in a kryptonite Reaper suit for reasons unknown. To his dismay, he finds himself up against other humans. In order to keep his vow of never killing, this Reaper must get zero kills. This is going to be rough. It's going to be hard for this proxied Reaper to get zero kills. Both players, no scouting whatsoever. So here's Superman and his buddy. Uh, we'll call him Jimmy, I guess. And oh, Superman. Superman. Okay, no kills yet. No kills yet on Superman. Oh, he gets one. He gets the Marine kill. He's killed a human. He's lost his vow. Oh, the SCV gets a Reaper kill, though. Nicely done by Blazewa. One Reaper is a lot easier to deal with compared to two, although if you're bringing all the SCVs off the line, you're losing a lot of mining time here, Blazewa. I really don't like this. It's really good control from Jeff, though. Other than losing the one Reaper, losing the one to an SCV, which is not a great experience. Good juke, though. Not getting surrounded here. Picks off another one. Four kills on Superman. Oh, Superman. Your vow to never kill has been completely lost. Cyclone out for Blazewa, though, and I think that's time to go. Sure, it's multiple Reapers in production here, but the multiple Reapers don't do well against Cyclones. Cyclones don't do bonus damage against Reapers, but they just hit really hard. They have really nice DPS levels, and that's pretty much what matters. Using the barracks to scout. Here comes Superman and his friends. And... Okay, using the high ground spot. KD8 charge, blowing everybody back there. Blazewa's units take that 10 damage, or 5 damage, rather. Yep. Five damage. They're trying to kill the barracks? I don't know if you should be using your attack on the barracks. The barracks is not really hurting anything. Oh. Somebody got knocked down there, though. It wasn't Superman. Superman still has his four kills. He's still alive. But it looks like Blazewa has stabilized the Reapers. The remaining three Reapers shouldn't be able to do anything against these three Marines and a Cyclone. So we're going to go ahead and call that good. Armory on the way from Blazewa. He's expanding behind this. An expansion already halfway done for Jeff. So his aggression... He's expanding behind it the whole time. It was definitely not an all-in, just there to do some damage. And did end up killing three SCVs, a Reaper, and a Marine in the process. Did lose a couple Reapers of his own. Uh, but I'd say he's doing okay, especially considering the fact that his expansion is up. Oh, he jukes back in when everyone's distracted by the floating barracks on the other side here. More SCVs are going to die. Where is Superman? Huh. There he is. Superman has five kills. This is one of the most successful Reapers of all time, and it's one where the creator intended for Superman to get zero kills. How amazing is that? I'd say TBT is probably the situation we're most likely to see, where we are more likely to see Reaper kills. It just is. I've seen more Reaper kills in TBT than anywhere else on the channel recently, so 
Go figure about that. But both players are kind of just sitting back and expanding. We do have a medevac in production here with a Thor. A Thor opening here from Blazewa. These Reapers are still trying to do stuff. I don't know about this, man. Marine count is good. Cyclone count is good. There's going to be Thor out soon. Thor's hit really hard. Again, don't do any bonus damage versus Reapers, but just do enough damage that their small health pools can't really stand up to the consistent barrage from the Thor attack. So Thor is here. There he is. Medivac out. Healing up these Marines too. Healing and carrying and going for the Thor drop. I don't know if Jeff is ready for a Thor drop. I'm going to be honest. He's got a couple Cyclones, which is good. Cyclones do have that bonus damage versus armored stuff, which is what these things are. And, oh, the Reapers, though. Yo! <laughs> yeah, they got one shot. They got one shot by the Thors. One boom, boom, boom. It's enough to take them completely out. Cyclone waiting for this drop to come. He knows it's on its way because the Reapers gave their lives to make sure they knew this was coming. So here it comes. Gonna try to sneak on in here. I really don't know if you should. Obviously, Jeff knows this is coming, Blazois. All right, it's coming in. There's a mo. Oh, there's a missile turret too. All right, so kills SCV, 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 and Cyclone just hurts really hard. That said, Thor has a lot of HP. Using that single target attack on that Viking to get rid of it, all the SCVs retreating from this natural base, except for ones that don't know any better, and they are getting crushed. This Thor drop, eight kills on this guy, and nothing can stop him. The Cyclones can't do anything. The tank tries to set up in range to kill him, but nope. Thor's not going to wander into that circle of death. So go to going to try to take down at this base of Jeff's. Jeff's going to lose his natural. Ah, uh, maybe not. Vikings clear out the medevac, so the Thor has nowhere to go. But can we save the orbital command? Single target attack doing a lot of work here. We need to repair. Mule comes in trying to repair. Looks like he's going to be able to save it here. Tank plus Cyclone is enough to kill the Thor. The orbital command is down to 400 HP. It's almost dead. But not quite there yet. But good save there by Jeff. Unfortunately, ended up losing eight. No, four SCVs. Blazois has lost eight SCVs during those Reaper attacks up on the other side there. So, worker count 35 to 26. Blazois has the lead. Again, no mining was happening here at Jeff's Natural for so long, and Blazois just been mining happily. No big deal. Cycling for Blazois just wanders right up the front door and starts killing a supply depot. You are brave, Cyclone pilot. And you're gonna get a kill. Way to go. Your braveness has paid off and now you are dead. All right, so sometimes braveness pays off and sometimes it doesn't. Meanwhile, Thor drop over here, gonna kill another supply depot. Uh, Jeff's already supply blocked. Now he's further supply blocked. 45 available supply for the 60 that he has right now. So he's gotta build additional supply depots. Maybe another command center, though he does already have a third command center inside his base. Whereas Blazois is sitting, does he have a third CC yet? He doesn't. Surprisingly enough, he does not. Hmm. Sound levels might have been loud there for the first part of this cast. I don't know. You probably were okay, though. I think everything's just fine. Thor in production. Widowmine in production for the Blazois. Thor drop on the top left. Thor drop in the middle of the map for Blazois. He seems to be kind of interested and continuing this Thor dropping stuff, he is making more Thors and more double pumping Thors. It's almost like a mass Thor strategy here from Blazois. What on what? How is that a thing? I do not think that's part of the meta. I could be wrong. I could be wrong about the TBT in uh, meta in master level, but hmm. All right, so Blazois' third base is under construction here too. And both players are just sort of hanging out at this stage of the game. Nobody seems intent on aggression. Both players just going for their third base. It's 46 to 40 harvesters. Pretty close. Blazois is up, but not by all that much. And the third base is going to land. Yeah. Timing here for Jeff is a little bit better. Gets that third base. It's up. It's being mined from. Whereas Blazois' third base is under construction on site. So Vikings running around. Did they just pick off that Thor drop? No. Did they? No, only one Thor has died. Where did it go then? Must have just pulled it back into safety. Yeah, I think this is it. This is our Thor drop central right now. They were in the middle of the map, but then he realized Vikings were a threat and got out of there before the Vikings could find them and kill them. Boy, World Cup update. That England versus Colombia match yesterday was amazing. Went to penalty kicks after it was tied at the end of regulation. Had an overtime period of two 15-minute halves. Nobody could score there. And then penalty kicks, and England won it by one. It was intense. England fans are just... 
They've had so much failure in the World Cup, especially in the knockout stages over the last 40 or 50 years. So for them to make it into the round of, I think they're in the round of eight now, is pretty great. Pretty great for them. They're pretty excited. Columbia obviously very disappointed, but did their best. It was a scrappy, chippy game. I think seven or eight yellow cards got given. Uh, but in the end, England was victorious. All right. Uh, we're just hanging out. I mean, the last couple minutes, nobody's been really doing anything. Jeff is working on battle cruisers, though. Should mention that. So battle cruisers have arrived. Battle cruiser versus Thor is in an interesting battle. Just because Thors do have that really good anti-air single target mode, which is what Blazewa has been using so far against Battle Cruiser, seems pretty good. That said, Yamato Cannon hits really hard. Whew, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. Thors have 400 hit points. I'm pretty sure Yamato Cannon does 300. Yep, 300 damage. They can't one-shot him. Definitely not gonna do that. These Marines just kind of wandering up the front door of Jeff and getting murdered. I don't know if... I don't think they scouted... I'm pretty sure they did not scout the battle cruisers. Let's see. No, no, no. No, I don't think he knows these are here. So it's going to be a Sky Terran event from Jeff, or his Blazois definitely going for these Thors. Is he still making them? Yeah, still pumping them two at a time. Here comes the Thor drop fleet. I have never seen this before. This is nine dropships with Thors coming your way. Upgrades. Plus two ground armor for these mech units for Blazewa. Jeff has the Yamato cannon. Weapon refit, but that's it. And is he going to go in is the question. There's two sensor towers for Jeff covering all access into his base. You can't sneak in here against him. And he's just going to go. He's going to go with the Thors. Here are the Vikings. Here are the battle cruisers. Here is our battle. Oh my gosh. This is insanity. Yamato cannons. Yeah, doing pretty good here. Getting some shots off on the medevacs. One of the battle cruisers does end up going down here. Vikings can try to clear out the medevacs, but the single target attacks on Blazewa's Thors are knocking them out of the sky. Black they are made of tissue paper, trying to do a repair on these battle cruisers is really good. Being able to repair his own stuff is being useful here too. Another battle cruiser goes down. These two battle cruisers are all that stands between Jeff and death by these seven fairly injured Thors, mind you. They're not doing very well. What are you? Why are you walking down there? Why do they walk down that ramp instead of attacking? I don't know. Maybe I missed micro out of Blazewall. But Jeff does manage to do it, mainly because uh, Blazewall gets the heck out of there. He runs with his remaining Thors. Medivacs retreating out there as well. So it's 160 to 102 supply. Blazewall has a massive lead on his opponent. Resources lost 4,500 for Blazewall and 5,000 for Jeff. Lost how many of his battle cruisers have died? Two and five Thors have been lost by Belagewa. Anybody going for a fourth base is the question of the day right now. And yes, indeed, there is one under construction right now for Belagewa. It's up 60 or down 63 to 67 harvesters. Jeff decides to take his fourth at about the same time, feeling pretty safe about that. I just it's 176 to 114 supply. I'm pretty sure Jeff only has these two BCs. He has a uh, two battle cruiser, four battle cruisers now, two tanks, and a Viking is his army, which doesn't seem like a lot until you consider that Blazewa has entirely Thors. Which again, the upgrades are great, but the Yamato cannons hurt them a lot. And the fact that the battle cruisers can tactical jump out of danger when they're being hurt, back to being healed, and then rejoin the fight again is a really good way to use them. Jeff's been pretty intelligent with those so far. APM check, 145 on average for Jeff, 124 on average throughout the game. For Blazewa, we're heading up with the BCs. Four BC hit squad. The plus one, plus one is done for these air units for Jeff. So we're going to follow them. It looks like they're going to make attack on this fourth, which doesn't have any defense whatsoever. In fact, it's not even done yet. He's going to hit it just about the time this command center finishes. And that's a really bad time to get attacked, as it turns out. You don't want to have your base attacked just as it's finishing because you can't cancel it. And you usually don't have a lot to defend it by that stage either. So here we go. Can they get the base? Well, they're distracted by the Thors. Yep, and they tactical jump over to this fifth base. That Blazewa is going for. They didn't tactical jump back home, so there's no going home for this, but they're going to go ahead and take down the fifth base before it's even done building, which again is a better scenario for Blazewa, but a lot of SCVs are going down here. 14 SCVs have died. It's 74 to 69 harvesters. Jeff decides that is a job well done. I've killed some workers. I killed the fifth, and I'm going to run before I get chased down by these Thors and killed because I can't beat them in a straight up fight. Not outnumbered as much as I am. Infernal Pre-Igniter on the way. Smart servos. 
from Jeff. Here come the Thors. They want oh, the tactical jump though is good, but he does leave his fourth base essentially undefended. There's a tank here, but it's gone. This base is going to die. This Thor drop is crazy. No nope. battle cruisers at the fourth base to Wrecking House. Fifth fourth base by Jeff goes down so quickly. Never even got made into a planetary fortress at all. These medevacs are kind of affecting our vision, but Blazewa is wrecking on through. Still on three bases is Jeff. However, he has, well, he's working on killing this base. He's also jumping additional battle cruisers into Blazewa's main to kill his production facilities and making sure the fifth base doesn't come up either. So there's battle cruisers everywhere. What do these Thors want to do? They decide, they think about going home. They're not sure how they want to handle this. Blazewa says, all right, it's base race time. Forget it. You want to base race someone who has BCs? I don't know about this. I'm not convinced this is the way to go, but battle cruisers versus Thor's base race time, baby. Thor's are wrecking everything inside the main base of Jeff, killing his building so dang quickly. Thor's hammer, man. 33 damage with the plus two upgrade that he with the plus one upgrade that he has. Times two. All these buildings are dying. The battle cruisers are killing stuff. I don't think as quickly. Oh no, Blazewa tried to build bases here at the fifth base location. But that's not going very well for him at all. The Thors for Blazewa seem a little bit at a loss of what to do. Inside the main base of Jeff, he needs to start killing these additional expansions. Jeff is taking a base in the bottom right-hand corner. He's trying to build there in the midst of all of this chaos. Command center for Blazewa. Falls and explodes. Battlecruiser is still killing whatever random stuff up here. Jeff, Jeff has not given them a directive, so they're just killing whatever happens to be here. Thor's killing all of the supply depots. Both players are severely supply blocked. Ah, Blaze was actually not supply blocked anymore. He, oh, now he is, but not as much. Uh, Jeff has 30 available supply for the 107 supply army that he's rolling with. So it's time to place your bets. Who's going to win this thing? Who's going to win this base race? I feel like the Battlecruiser player Jeff has the advantage just because of mobility. These Thors are really good at what they do, but they're also not very mobile. I guess that's what the medevacs are for, though. Is there any dead space? You could probably float a command center up in the top left here if you wanted. If you wanted to be a jerk about it, uh, Jeff could absolutely float a base, but instead he's just expanding multiple times. He's building four command centers at once right now, you guys. He's quadruple expanding in the face of this base race. Again, just counting on the fact that the Thors are not super mobile. That said, again, the medevacs are a huge problem and a huge advantage for Blazewa's Thors. All right, so the natural base, or the third base, rather, of Jeff is gone. There's, for some reason, Blazewa still has this base mining, which he really should not be allowed, I don't think. He should not be allowed to have that one. SCVs from Blazewa down here building a base in the southern section of the map. I'm pretty sure that Jeff doesn't know that it's there. No, he does not. Jeff is unaware that it's there. You got to keep killing stuff, man. Another base. Jeff, well, he's got 3,000 minerals. Might as well build bases everywhere. And say, let's play Ring Around the Rosy, Thors. Why don't you do that? And then if you want to engage with my Battlecruiser army, you absolutely can. Nine Battlecruisers versus 15 Thors. Again, the upgrades are plus two armor, plus one attack for Blazewa's units, and plus two, plus two for Jeff, along with a weapon refit on his Battlecruisers. So one of Jeff's bases go down. But keep in mind um, that he has two more bases and additional ones under construction here, too. Yeah, this one's almost done. That one's almost done, so he's up to four bases and an orbital command. So five total bases. It's a, yeah, it's a game of ring around the rosy. It's can you find where my bases are going around in a circle on the map? Hoping I get revealed here. Blaze was triple expanding himself. <laughs> Planetary fortresses on the way here for Jeff, which I guess helps a little bit. Ah, oh, one of the Thors comes over to find a base by himself. Gets Yamato cannon down though. And Planetary Fortress to down. Who got that kill? I think the PF did. I think the PF did. Another one of Jeff's bases are down. But he's got 2,600 minerals in the bank. He only has six SCVs. Blazewa only has five SCVs right now. This is friggin' hilarious. Blazewa finishes a base in the third of Jeff's side of the map. And immediately loses it. Another base of Blazewa is under, under fire here too. I just feel like the mobility of the battle cruisers, their ability to jump... To tactical jump to places is better. It is better for Jeff than for these Thors. He also seems averse to splitting these up too much. I guess it's because he doesn't want to run into the BCs with just a group of two or three Thors, right? He needs to attack them with all of them, but Jeff doesn't have to engage. He doesn't have to engage with all of them. If there's all of them, he tactical jumps away. Blazewa has to go find him, and that 
uses valuable time. I think Jeff has this. I think just in the sense that Jeff doesn't have to engage. Look at this. He's like, oh, the Thors? All right, we'll get out of here. Well, he loses a couple BCs in the process. Oh, one gets out. And he jumps out. No big deal. He doesn't have to fight. And Blazewell's like, oh, are you serious right now? It's 120 to 58 supply. Blazewell's army is way bigger. Way, way bigger right now. 5,000 for Jeff compared to a full 13, 14,000 for Blazewell. Which, again, just rolls right off the tongue. I'm really enjoying this. Resources lost to this point. Oh, that's units lost. Resources lost. Going to be 18,000 for Blazewell and 20,000-ish uh, for Jeff. Battlecruiser is looking for additional stuff to kill. The only buildings left for Blazewell are here. There's a command center. And there's another command center, and I really feel like if Jeff could just see a model cannon each of these down, he doesn't, again, doesn't have to fight the Thors. What is Blazewa doing? Blazewa. Is he typing? Is he gone? His current APM is 50, so he's doing stuff. He knows about, look, he can see these bases in the bottom right-hand corner and the one in the north here, too. Don't know. I don't know exactly what he's trying to do here, but the battle cruisers are along the right side. They're just kind of running around, trying to see what else to do. Somehow he still has two star star ports, and he has an armory. He's got four star ports, so he's spending his money on battle cruisers here instead of bases, like he's been doing for a while now. And I don't know about leaving these undefended, but I don't know what else you can do. Selling like a wat, uh, selling a watchtower here, and yeah, Jeff's gonna lose this base, and he's fine with it because he has three additional ones. Right? He's okay with this one going down, because it's going down! There's really no saving this Planetary Fortress. I know Planetary Fortresses are good, but not in the face of um, 14 Thors. No, not in the face of 14 Thors at all. Alright, Battle Cruisers, I think you have to make a move here. Because if it comes down to a face-to-face -face confrontation between you guys and you guys, I think the Thors win. Although, if the Yamatos are good... Oh, boy. I don't know. He's been adding to that Battlecruiser group for the last couple of minutes here, and that helps his numbers out quite a bit. It's uh, 11 Battlecruisers to 14 Thors. That feels like a much better fight. And the upgrades are better for Jeff, too. As we mentioned, it's plus two, plus two. Oh, oh, oh. He thinks he's going to catch these Battlecruisers out of position. He lands. It just turns into a giant. Everybody versus everybody here. Yamato cannons are going down. The Thor count is dropping precipitously right now. Yeah, the battle cruisers are not dying. A couple of them are going down, but there are still several remaining here. The Thor count is down to three. The Thor count is down to two. It is down to one, and that's going to be it. Jeff wins the battle straight up. Blazewall with the GG. He's defeated, and Jeff is victorious in 22 minutes and 47 seconds. And he wants to kill the Metavax, but he's done. He's done killing their Metavax. Woo, what a game. What a game, what a game. Out of Jeff and Blazewall. See? These master level games are fun. I'm really sad only about 2,000 people are going to watch it. I feel like this deserves a lot more views than that. But it's a mirror match and it's a Masters. And some of you guys, again, you're watching, so this is not you. But some of the viewers only care about the super high level stuff. So look at how close this was. It's 26,000 resources lost for Blazewall to 25 for Jeff. 81 to 79 harvesters killed. 22 Thors died. Battlecruiser death count is only 8. Jeff ended the game with 6 Battlecruisers. Not bad. Not the bad of Jeff. Plus 2, plus 2. Making it happen. Battlecruiser with 29 kills. He's a commander. 12 kills sergeant. 14 kills sergeant. 2 kills recruit. He must be one of the new ones. And a 15 kill captain here too. Alright. Well, that's going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void Master Level. Go ahead and hit the like button. Hit the subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All is slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.